Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Oskold Melnichuk, and this afternoon I am speaking with Alim Aliyev, uh, who is Deputy Director of the Ukrainian Institute. He's a human rights defender. He's a manager of educational cultural projects, a researcher, a media consultant, um, and the co-author of a book, Mustafa Jemilev, Unbreakable, about a Crimean Tartar leader. Um, welcome, Alim. It's a pleasure to speak with you this afternoon. Good afternoon, dear Oskold, and thank you for this conversation. Well, I, I'd like to begin just by asking you about uh, where you grew up, where you were raised, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, I was born in Uzbekistan, in the Cherchik city, uh, because uh, all of my family were deported uh, to uh, uh, Central Asia uh, in uh, 1944. It, it was a genocide of uh, Crimean Tatar people uh, by Stalin regime. Uh, because all of uh, uh, Crimean Tatar deported to Central Asia, to Siberia, to Ural, and half of uh, the all of the nation uh, died during this deportation. In uh, 1989, our family was one of the uh, first families who returned to uh, Crimea, to the, our motherland. I grew up in the uh, western part of Crimea. My roots is from the Bakhch Sarai, very special city to Crimean Tatars because it was the capital of uh, Crimean Kaganate. But in late uh, 18th and 19th, it was uh, very problematically to buy houses or flats in uh, this region or in some regions near the sea. That's why uh, my parents bought uh, the house in the village uh, between Simferopol city, it's the capital uh, uh, of uh, Crimea now, and uh, Yevpatori is another big city in uh, Crimea. So, um, and what were your parents doing and what was it like to return to Crimea after half a century of resettlement? You know, my, uh, my parents uh, from the, their childhood, uh, they uh, heard about Crimea, about motherland. And um, I talked about, uh, about it uh, one year ago with my mom. And she said that uh, she thought that the Crimea is, a, is the best place in the world. And Crimea is a place with uh, uh, juicy fruits, very tasty fruits, with uh, wonderful landscapes, with the Crimea Sea. But uh, first of all, Crimea is our motherland, and all of Crimean Tatars should live in uh, their own motherland. That's why, after 45, year, uh, 45 years, uh, our family like a uh, family of a lot of Crimean Tatars returned to Crimea. What did they find there? What remained of what had been left behind? Mm -hmm. Was there any continuity? Were there um, uh, institutions, Crimean Tatar institutions that had survived? Yeah, you know, uh, these first years uh, were really hard because uh, the local people who um, uh, came to Crimea after the deportation. Uh, they, they thought that Crimean Tatars are um, um, very angry people, uh, people who uh, want to, to uh, take their, uh, their homes and um, uh, you know, very specific people. But uh, in fact, Crimean Tatars, we returned to just to the uh, land, yeah? We had any houses. We started to build our houses. We started to build our institutions, for example, the Medjilis of Crimean Tatar people, the Kurultai of Crimean Tatar uh, people is a, uh, so, uh, it's a self-governance institutions of uh, 
uh, Crimean Tatar people as an indigenous people of Crimea and Ukraine as well. And uh, that's why we started to um, build our life in a new way in Crimea uh, from the renaissance of Crimean Tatar culture, uh, Crimean Tatar language, to um, founding of uh, new political institutions like Imagilis. And Mustafa Jamilev, um, a famous Soviet dissident, uh, now he's a leader of Crimean Tatars. Uh, he was uh, the first uh, head of uh, the Mijilis of Crimean Tatar people. And how did the institutions develop and how did relationships with the people who had come into Crimea after um, the Crimean Tatars had been deported um, evolve over the next 30 years? Yeah, you know, Crimean Tatar, like Ukrainians, we have very uh, strong horizontal uh, ties. And um, that's why when the Medjilis, uh established, um, we, we had a lot of local Medjilises in almost every uh, villages and cities in Crimea where the Crimean Tatar lives. Uh, and uh, that's why we have such very uh, horizontal system of, of the management in Medjilis. And uh, I think it, it, it's a democratic system because we have an elections, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, Crimean Tatar parties who have their own programs and uh, who elected or not elected to the cruel type to Crimea, of uh, the Crimean Tatar people. Um, it, it was a lot of, uh, I remember it was a very hard debate between the uh, candidates, uh, between the, the, uh, these parties uh, views to the, uh, how Crimean Tatar uh, nation should uh, be developed in uh, Crimea. Yeah, and uh, in our area, uh, among our family, a lot of people were involved to the life of the social political life of Crimean Tatars. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, it's, um, it's one of the steps that help us to uh, build our own um, subje subjectivity, yeah, and uh, that's why it's uh, for today it's also important because uh, uh, majority of Crimean Tatar people uh, was banned in uh, 2016 in Crimea. What, what were the practical consequences of that? Yeah, it means that uh, Medjilis of Crimean Tatar people for uh, Russian occupiers, uh, it's an extremistic organization. Mm -hmm. The leaders of Medjilis, uh, like uh, Rifat Chuvarov, uh, Mustafa Jamilev, they're uh, personas non, non grata in, in Crimea. We started to work, work to, uh, together in Crimea in, in a local Crimean Tatar newspaper uh, of the name, uh, Nariman Jilal. He, uh, he's the uh, first deputy head of Majelis of Crimean Tatar people, and during eight years, uh, he was the most powerful of all of free people in Crimea. And now, uh, Nariman Jilal's, Jilal. Uh, in a prison uh, due fabricated political case, um, uh, fabricated by Russia political case. And it means that uh, for today, uh, a, a lot of active members of Medjilis of political system of Crimean Tatars, uh, not in Crimea, but we have uh, good connections between the people who live in Crimea and who lives outside of Crimea. So before we get um, into um, your 
uh, kind of adult work, I'd love to know what it was like kind of um, growing up there and going into schools there. What did you study and, and what was sort of your path to your present work? Um, you you uh, are working in cultural field. My parents wants that uh, I will be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but, Everybody's parents want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I have another choice. And uh, I studied political science in uh, Crimea, in Tavrida National University. And, uh, and or Orange Revolution in uh, Ukraine helps me to do such uh, such choice because i uh, in uh, in my uh, last class in uh, school i'm deeply involved in political pr process in the revolution uh, orange revolution of the um supporting of uh, uh viktor yushchenko and after that i, I choose to uh, be a political scientist and, and today I work in a cross-sectoral uh, area. It's between um, human rights, communications, and culture. And it's about soft power, how to present it Ukraine, how to present it Crimean Tatar, um in uh, international um uh, to the international community and also how to present crimean charters uh in ukraine because before 2014 not many ukrainians knows about crimean tatar culture about crimean tatar traditions uh about uh our history right right and it's a fascinating history um, and I wonder if you might uh, attempt just for our audience to do a very kind of brief capsule summary of the, because it's a deep and long history. This is not something yeah. that began yesterday. Um, it, 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 it is, it's surprising how little known it is given uh, its importance uh, for the whole region and, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of intertwining of the uh, multiple cultures there. Our uh, process of national building uh, were in Crimea. And three factors that help us to be uh, Crimean Tatars it's um, land and it's Crimean Peninsula, it's a uh, language, it's uh, uh, Crimean Tatar language, it's uh, 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 Turkic uh, branch of languages, and also Islam religious. But uh, today, you know, I say that Crimean Tatars, we like uh, translators between two uh, big uh, contexts. First, uh, it's Ukrainian European context. Second, it's um, uh, 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 Turkish uh, Muslim context. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, uh, our, uh, during all of our history, we have this very um, role of communicators uh, between a uh, few lands, few worlds in uh, our region. And he, you know that Crimean Tatars uh, during a uh, few centuries, we have our own uh, independent state, Crimean Henet. Uh, but after the first annexation, uh, by Catherine. When? when was that? Uh, it was in 18th century. Right. It was in 18th century by Catherine II. We lose our um, state. And a lot of Crimean, it was the first attempt of uh, colonization of Crimea. Um, mm. For today, it's <clears throat> uh, the new occupation of Crimea is the third attempt of colonization of Crimea by Russia. And in this sort of struggle for um, ownership of a, a peninsula that after all seems to be primarily the uh, rightful um, 
land of the Crimean Tartars in the struggle for this um, between Ukraine and Russia, um, to what degree are Crimean Tartars able to have a say in their own sort of future and their own self-government? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, uh, today full-scale war uh, in uh, Ukraine uh, uh, started in 2014 by the temporary occupation of Crimea by Russia. Mm. And uh, Crimean Tatars, we, are, uh, we have our own identity. Um, we have our own traditions, uh, religion, but very important thing, uh, Crimean Tatars is, uh, we are Ukrainian, Ukrainians as a part of political nation. And it's very important to understand. Russians <laughs> not understanding yet why Crimean Tatars, why uh, Ukrainians fight against uh, them. Because uh, we have a very, um, uh, we have few uh, uh, common values. It's values of freedom and it's values of dignity. And it's not about money. It's not about um, uh, butter broad, yeah. <laughs> uh, in uh, Russia, it's not about television. It's about your own dignity and uh, freedom. And that's why we struggle uh, for our freedom. So um, you're you're suggesting that <clears throat> after the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, Crimean Tartars experienced an opportunity to um, sort of for the community to flourish and grow, <clears throat> excuse me, in kind of the, according to their own terms. Mm -hmm. And that um, you're suggesting that there has been a kind of re repression of the culture since the occupation of Crimea. Yeah. Yeah. And I can just, uh, mm, you know, uh, Crimean Tatars and Ukrainians with a very uh, clear national identities have been viewed uh, as a threat to Russia's security in Crimea by the peninsula occupying authorities since 2014. And that why the Russian authorities destroyed tangible and intangible uh, cultural heritage uh, that does not feed uh, into the Kremlin's modern ideology. Mm -hmm. One good example is the fate of uh, the Khan's palace in Bakhtsarai. It's a crucial object of the tangible heritage of Crimean Tata. Uh, it's be being uh, destroyed the, the uh, goods of uh, the restoration. Mm -hmm. uh, one more example, it's about language. For today, just mm, uh, Crimean Tata language is listed is one of the disappearing languages by UNESCO. And only 3% of uh, uh, pupils in Crimea are studying in Crimean Tata language. Mm. Uh, to stop the language from the disappearing, parents create private initiatives in Crimea following language, as well as speak uh, at home with the ch their children. Uh, and my parents told me that the same situation was this in Soviet Union when the um, parents uh, 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 spoke uh, Crimean Tatar language at home that uh, helps to preserve language. Um, one more, it's uh, about uh, Crimean Tatar religious identity. For today, Russians trying to um, using our uh, identity uh, against us by, uh, by fabricating the image of Muslim terrorists or extremists or Crimean Tatar terrorists and extremists. I told before about the case uh, about the case of um, Nerevanjela. Uh, but what important? Uh, Yes, our religion has uh, always played an important role in uh, sharing the, uh, our identity, but uh, we have one tradition, 
and its tradition of nonviolent resistance, both in the Soviet times and now. It's a fundamental element of struggle for our own land. And uh, that's why when you ask about uh, culture, when you ask about um, uh, the situation or is the identity, uh, I can just say that uh, today we have a new colonization of Crimea. And this new colonization, it's also about identity, about destroying of identity. It's about the militarization of peninsula and not only the militarization of peninsula, militarization of consciousness, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's about the replacement of population. You know, uh, I just give one example. Before the first annexation of Crimea uh, in 18th century, 95% uh, uh, of all population in Crimea were Crimean Tatars. Today is just 15%. Mm. And uh, after 2014, uh, 50,000 uh, of Crimean inhabitants left Crimea. Uh, 30,000 of them uh, were Crimean Tatars. But we have the reserve trend. Half of half million of new citizens comes to Russia, to Crimea. And it's a, you know, change, changing uh, ethnic component uh, of population in Crimea also. Right. So that is a severe assault. Um, this is a speculative question, but what is it that you think it, uh, Russia finds so threatening about these indigenous identities? It has always been a mystery to me because so many other cultures and countries have found ways of absorbing and even elevating and celebrating the variety of different cultures within their boundaries? Yeah, I have, <laughs> I think I have a very simple answer because uh, for Russian authorities, for uh, a Russian state, uh, the question of identity and strong identity is a question of their national defense. Uh, because in Soviet times, uh, the nations, Ukrainians, Crimean Tatars, a lot of another nations who had strong roots, uh, they were enemies. The same situation now. Uh, for Russians, uh, uh, free human being with a, a critical thinking, with an understanding of uh, their own history, it's also enemy. And uh, that's why <laughs> they fight against us. You know, um, during these two months, I see how Russians, uh, Russians work in uh, uh, Kherson region that the temporary occupied now also. The same uh, steps were in Crimea. They um, kidnapping uh, active people, journalists, activists, um, um, human rights defenders, because they are the voice of a free land. Such situation we, we, we have during these eight years in Crimea. Um, what are the ways in which you are able to resist uh, this pressure, because again, I know I've read that many Crimean intellectuals have been arrested, those who have not managed to escape. Um, are you able to be in touch with them? And are there ways that we can support them? Yeah, of course, we, we touched with uh, our uh, families of political prisoners, also with the activists, uh, artists, um, writers, journalists, who live in Crimea now. And for me, it's crucial to save uh, these links between uh, uh, mainland of Ukraine and uh, Crimean citizens, because it's, you know, uh, we have the same blood. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's uh, important to support them and to support, uh, support for example, the uh, families of political uh, prisoners 
For today, we have more than 130 political prisoners and um, uh, 200 uh, children are uh, living now without uh, their fathers mm -hmm. because their fathers in prison now. Mm -hmm. And that's why we support these families. We support um, active uh, people and uh, new independent initiatives. They're mostly um, underground initiatives mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, um, uh, helps to preserve identities Mm -hmm. uh, due the organization of educational or cultural uh, events or programs in Crimea, mm -hmm. uh, also media initiatives and human rights initiatives. And uh, uh, it's uh, crucial to support them. Uh, not only, it's not about even uh, the supporting by, uh, by money, it's uh, about some capacity supporting to uh, just Mail that uh, we know about you and our, about your initiatives. It uh, really helps them to feel themselves uh, not alone in uh, occupied uh, occup uh, in occupied peninsula. So that that's very good to hear. And of course, I, I understand how valuable it can be to feel that you have been seen and are not uh, forgotten. Um, if there is um, some way that you could share with us a, a list of addresses, perhaps of people that we could write to, I'd appreciate that. And I'd make sure that our viewers um, have access to that. Uh, I, I grew up uh, writing letters on behalf of Ukrainian political prisoners back in the 70s. And I never oh. thought that I'd have to do that again, you know, through about the Helsinki uh, Human Rights Group. You probably know about that. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you work with Amnesty International and such organizations? Ah, yeah, they... yeah, just to, uh, today, um, before our interview, yes. I chatted with the head of Amnesty International in Ukraine. Of, of course, course uh, we have a strong connection with the human rights organization alike in Ukraine, uh, also abroad. Right. Great. Great. No, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that there is that kind of cooperation. Um, has um, I, I imagine that things have gotten harder since the war heated up uh, on February 24th. And I wonder if there are any particular changes you want us to be aware of uh, in the last three, two and a half months since this war began. Uh, you know, uh, Ra Russians uh, prepare Crimea to this uh, full-scale invasion during eight years. When I said about militarization, mm -hmm. it's about a uh, regular army, it's about weapon, it's about uh, some technical things. And uh, now Crimea is a peninsula of fear. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere of fear, it's uh, among the citizens, among the people. Um, it's totally mistrust between people. Because, um, you know, when you have fear, you just trust to your family, to your close friends, and you can ju uh, ju discuss uh, uh, political topics in such uh, small groups and small right. areas. Uh, it's one, uh, 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 one uh, tendency, uh, the second tendency, it's uh, about... Uh, <clears throat> how people can move from Crimea to mainland of Ukraine. And today it's um, not possible really because, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Russian army are staying there and uh, also can, um, for example, take uh, the, Mm, young men or not young men, just men to the army. And uh, it's uh, one of the challenges for Crimean Tata people now, now how to uh, save their own uh, children from the Russian army. Mm -hmm. yeah, because for today in Ukraine resistance, a lot of Crimean Tatars are in Ukraine army, uh, say Ukraine volunteers, as uh, um, uh, Ukrainians who 
make uh, some active um, steps uh, together. And, uh, and that's why uh, this trans uh, two, but you know, uh, during these two and uh, two months, a lot of Crimean Tatars said that we hope that Crimean Tatar, uh, Crimea, Crimea will return as soon as possible to, Crimea, to Ukraine. Well, I'm hoping that is um, that that comes to pass and soon. Uh, I I wonder if um, you might be willing to share with us something um, a, a poem or something in the Crimean language so that our viewers can uh, can hear uh, what that yeah. sounds like. Yeah. And maybe you could tell us something about who that is, who you'll be reading. Yeah, uh, we have uh, together with my friends, with colleagues, we, est uh, we established uh, a Ukrainian Crimean Tatar literature project that named Crimean Fig, uh, Krimsky Injur. It's, we have three anthologies, it's uh, uh, two of them. And Crimea Fig, it's a project that helps uh, to Crimean Tata, uh, poetries, um, authors, uh, translators to share their thoughts, to share, to share their texts about Crimea and also helps to Ukraine writers write about uh, Crimea. Mm. And yeah, you know, it's important to uh, Mm, when uh, the topic of uh, of Crimea in an uh, intellectual uh, uh, stand of uh, Ukraine and not only Ukraine. That's why I try to uh, read uh, one small text by Crimean Tatar uh, poetry. Yillar Dionemu, Sierra Kokche, Crimean Tatar writer. Uh, the poet, uh, poem uh, Flow of Time. Yolar dönemi bir adımı illeri eko sartka böyle yazılgan acaba halkının başına ya da belki elimden kuşunu uçurttum. Ordum de söktüm kolumda kıyıpını. Ordum de söktüm. De güley bakçalar De solop to kuleche chikler. To nomenka dostlar e jibi bayrak kotardler. Yarn mazda nevar. To kalana kalemon. Ordum vi de soktum kunda kyepna. Ordum de soktum. De kule de aglai de baka aineje kos ile. De neschem bur tagdar kusmet oldum milet me. Kuklerge yet kazap. Son ise fırlata yerge. Orülgen yapımını söküle. Kene de söküle. Yıllar dönemi umutten kesilmem ne olsa da ogde. Men yapının ucunu katı tutarım elimde. Çok sefer gayrdan başlarımız da bir kere. Kolumdaki yapım yanı örneklü oraya. Is there anything else you'd like um, the world to hear about this, your circumstances now and anything that you would like uh, us to uh, keep in mind and try to do in the next months as we try to bring this war to a quick and successful conclusion? Uh, yes, Ascolt. I want to say that uh, today our fighting, today our war, it's not only about Crimean Tatars, it's not only about Ukrainians, it's uh, about all of civil rights war. And uh, please support Ukrainians, please support our state, support Crimean Tatars, because, um, uh, you know, we should, we should win. Uh, and after our win, we will gather in our free Bakh Sarai. <laughs> I very much look forward to that moment and to raising a glass with you together. Uh, of course, of course. To a happy future. Alim Aliyev, thank you so very much for taking time to speak with us. Thank you, thank you.